Well, it's great to be here. It's great to be amongst uh, so many friends. I've got to talk about how to be an atheist. Wow. Of all the festivals to talk about that. Well, <laughs> this is how I'd start. This is how I'd start. Easy. Easy. Don't be Richard Dawkins. Good start. Good start. Easy. Now, um, I've, had, uh, I've had my own run-ins uh, with Mr. Dawkins, the Dawkins Meister General. And it's not so much him often. It, well, he is the problem. But his followers, his devout, if not fanatical followers, the irony of that being hilarious on so many levels, is something to behold. Because if you criticise Richard Dawkins uh, on social media, uh, you will get a tirade of enraged Dawkins fanatics for the next few weeks, as I know myself, uh, at, at some cost. Now, I think, for me, what I object to is the new atheism, as it's called. The new atheism of the likes of Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris. And what they often do is they focus particularly on Muslims and Islam. They single them out. And they portray Muslims as a general mass, as inherently fanatical, as extreme, as liable to terrorism, as inherently misogynistic, and all of those uh, sorts of things. And I find that very objectionable, because I think that fuels bigotry. I think that fuels chauvinism and we see at the moment Muslims being attacked often in the streets. We see media coverage of Muslims and uh, the way, for example, one study showed that 91% of all coverage of Muslims in one week taken at random uh, was negative. And then I think of, you know, the Muslims I grew up with who never get shown on TV and in the media, people just like everybody else. I think of the Muslim Labour MPs who voted for equal marriage and like others uh, who, who didn't, for example. And for me, that kind of sums it up, because what new atheism does, this new atheism that I object to does, is it, it, it kind of portrays religion as the root of all evil and all the problems we have in global society. And I think that couldn't be any further from the truth, because religion, throughout its history, has been used to justify and rationalise all sorts of things. So... If I thought of my great uncle, who was a Methodist lay preacher and a socialist, and it was often said Methodism, uh, the Labour Party owes more to Methodism uh, than to Marxism, and many of the early socialists in this country were proud Christians. And of course you could say, well, Christianity was used to justify Franco uh, in Franco Spain. It's been used to justify forms of communism. It's been used to justify forms of liberalism. You've got the Christian Democrats in Europe. It's... It's something which is a faith which people have, which is used to justify all sorts of things. And when we look at violence and oppression, the root of that isn't the religion. It's the religion being used and twisted and distorted out of all recognition to support violence and oppression and all those other things. It's not the religion itself that is to blame. And that's what new atheism, this aggressive form of new atheism, does. Now... When people often, and I see this, people proudly call themselves an atheist, they put it on their social media profiles, and I always think partly, you know, what do you want, a cookie? Um, I don't know why that's something, if anything, to, 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 to yell about in that proud way, and often what disturbs me is the way atheism, that sort of atheism, is often all about being as rude as possible about people's beliefs and about believers, that this view that insulting belief and people's proudly held beliefs is some sort of act of defiance. Well, I don't think that's atheism. I think that's just being rude. And I just think that's being disrespectful. And what I'm interested in more is finding ways of uniting people where they have common interests and shared values, particularly in the fight against injustice. So I think recently about Gaza and the horrific scenes that we saw in Gaza and what inspired me, obviously it was a terrible bloodshed and awful atrocities, but what inspired me was how uh, Muslims and atheists, Christians and Jews, many of them and people from all different religions and of no religions came together to speak out against what was happening in Gaza. And I think of food banks across the country often uh, kept going and maintained by people of faith. I think of struggles against uh, poverty wages and in support of the living wage. For example, by 
Citizens UK. And these are, pe- these are campaigns that people of faith have not just taken a role in, but often a leadership role in. And I want people who don't want injustice and who are angry about injustice to come together, whatever their religious creed or none uh, at all. And we might come to injustice for different reasons. Some might justify their, uh, their, you know, their, their struggle against injustice on the basis of their atheism. They think this is all we've got, so we better make the best of it. Others believe, and they look to the Bible and the teachings of Jesus Christ and use that, whether it be the Sermon uh, on the Mount, for example, an inspiring, uh, inspiring talk which speaks through the ages, and they use that to justify their own struggle. And for me, it doesn't matter how you justify that. It doesn't matter where you come from. It's the fact we're all united together, taking on the many injustices that affect our society, like poverty pay, like the lack of workers' rights, like public services coming under attack through cuts, through austerity, through privatisation, like uh, you know, the fact we've got these terrible privatised utilities ripping us all off. All of us, no matter where we come from, can unite together. And for me, being an atheist is about secularism. And I think secularism is often misunderstood because all secularism means is the state doesn't privilege one set of beliefs over another. It defends everybody's right to have a belief or to have no beliefs at all. But the state keeps its nose out of people's religious beliefs and protects them as something which all of us have the very basic right to have without intrusion from the state or the state telling us what's the right thing to believe in or what's not. And that's why, you know, I do want people from all religious backgrounds and of none to come together, including in education. That's why I don't support separating children according to uh, various beliefs, but to integrate them and allow people to worship freely without the state intervening. And for me, that's what atheism is about. It's nothing special. It's nothing for me that I'm particularly proud of. It's just what I happen uh, to believe. But it doesn't mean dis- being disrespectful. It doesn't mean fighting against people uh, who have faith of, of creating artificial divisions. It's about reaching out to people who have the same shared values, who want to take on injustice, regardless of the beliefs that they have, having respect for those beliefs, looking to the contribution of people of faith in all of the struggles I spoke about. And if I do that, then I think I can be a good atheist, not force it on anyone, not be like Richard Dawkins, just a general arrogant ass, but just someone who respects people wherever they're from. That's atheism. It's about, for me, reaching out to people and being part, sisters and brothers, in the same sorts of campaigns. Thank you.